Hey everyone, welcome back. So today's Friday. Hope everyone had a great week. Uh, obviously, markets were up today. Bitcoin was up today. So we'll take a look at all that. We'll take a look at Ethereum as well, see what's going on there. The miners were up for the most part, which is great. Some of them were actually down. We'll take a look at it as well. And then we'll take a look at Bitmain, Canon, what's minor, Bitcoin miners, ROI, see what's going on there, which miners, the current miners. So we'll take a look at three miners from each group or from each company, and then we'll see which one is actually going to have the best ROI possible for you guys uh, and for the miners too. So that is it as always, not financial advice. You guys are on the drill here. I'm invested in the following coins and companies for full disclosure. And if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe, helps me out tremendously. All right, let's get into the numbers here. So here is the markets. S&P was up 2.46%, um, quite nice today to 3,901. Dow Jones was up 2.59% to 32,861. And NASDAQ was up 3.17% to 11,546. So overall, it was a good uh, good bounce today uh, based on what we had yesterday. We had a down day. Today, we had a nice little rally in the markets. Bitcoin obviously rallied a little bit too. It was up today only 1.48% on the day. Uh, it closed about a couple hours ago. Um, I'm recording this kind of late, so sorry. Had a honey honey do list for my wife. Uh, had to get that done before I could do this. So it's being recorded a little bit late. It's right around now. It's 9:30 Central Standard Time. So Bitcoin is still up. Obviously, Bitcoin was up at closed at 2,000 or 2,000 20,597. It hit a high of 20,755. It is now at 20,683, which is still looking pretty good. Uh, we're still waiting to see if we can turn a little bit more bullish on the daily chart right now. We are still below the price where we were here on the same RSI. So we're waiting for that to change. We're also waiting uh, to see if there's anything that's going to change here on the four hour chart right now. We're still looking a little bit bullish. If we look at the RSI, RSI currently is at 64. Last time we were around here was back, the price was much lower than where we are right now. So that's looking good. One hour. Same thing, we're kind of going up a little bit and it's kind of flat on the one hour right now. Uh, really no direction as far as which way it wants to go. Price is up a little bit higher from this point down here, which is pretty close to it. Um, so we are still looking a little bit bullish on the one hour chart, so that's good. Ethereum, going to the daily chart, it obviously was up today also 2.69% to a close of 1,554. It hit a high of 1,577. It is now at 1,565, so that's good. Now, let's get into the miners here really quick. Any was down 0.35% on the day to 45 cents. Argo was down 2.5% to 19.5 cents. BitDigital was flat on the day to $1.07. BitFarms was up 5.24% to $1.05, which is good. CleanSpark was up just a little bit, 0.55% to $3.66. Cores was down again quite a bit today, 11.23%. Um, Obviously, it wasn't as bad as yesterday's 78% drop. So, but we covered that already. So I'm not gonna get. It. I'm not even gonna get into it. DigiHost was up 11.81% to 74, almost 75 cents. DMG was up 4.18% to 20 cents. Greenage was up 5.2% to $1.01. Hive was up 2.11% to $3.38. Hut was up 11.32% to $2.36. Iris Energy was up 2.66 to $3.47. Luxfolio was up 6.98% to $0.4.6. Marathon was up 1.47% to $13.85. Mawson was up 7.93% to $0.45.9. Riot was up 3.07 to $7.05. Solano was up 7.14% to $1.20. Stronghold was up 11.49% to $0.97. Cents. So I think based on the week that we've had, I think most of the miners are going to be in the green for this week when we re review that in the uh, next week's video. Uh, but that is it for the miners. Let's take a look at the network cash rate really quick while we're at it. See what's going on there. And it is now at 256 million uh, terahashes per second. So it has come down a little bit, went up, uh, went up just a tad bit, but it's come down a little bit. Um, so it's still trending a little bit towards the downside, but we'll see how that continues on. We know that a lot of the miners are still getting plugged in, and we'll see what kind of effect that has on it uh, going forward. Okay, so that is it for network, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the miners. Let's take a look at uh, basically where we're going to be coming right now. So what I wanted, what I did today is. I took basically the three top miners from each company from Bitmain. So that includes the S19 Pro, S19 Pro J, 
and the S19 XP, along with Avalon's miners. Um, well, we'll get into the numbers. I have the numbers written down on them over here. But you can see the Avalon miners as well. And then we got also what's miners. Uh, so the what's miners, we're also including this. You can see the prices are kind of ridiculous, but I think these are spot prices. I've heard stories of miners being bought at $17 per uh, terahash, which is really low compared to where they were being bought last year. Um, I've heard stories of others being uh, paying $22, $23. So I've created a pretty good spreadsheet for this that I think will uh, help us evaluate all these miners that way. So why don't we just quickly look at that spreadsheet and I'll kind of go over it, what we're doing here and how all of these miners stack up based on the data that we do have. So there's some assumptions that we have to take into account here. Obviously, we don't know what the hash rate is going to increase by the network hash rate. We don't know if Bitcoin is going to continue to go up or if it's going to continue to go down. So there's some assumptions that we have to make here, obviously, uh, when evaluating these miners to see what the ROI is on them and what the time frame is for that. We do obviously know what the current price rate is. We also know what the current network hash rate is. It was... Um, 253 million, so I'll change that, 253, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, there we go. So that makes them a little bit more profitable. Electrical cost, this is obviously going to vary depending on what you have and also what uh, what the miners might have. Uh, obviously, the miners are going to have probably better rates, hopefully, if they have uh, fixed pricing, if they have uh, basically ver ver variable pricing, that's going to change for them. And then we're using the cost to terahash, which is right now at $25, which can uh, a little bit on the higher end, I think, but we can also adjust that down. So all the fields that are in red here are the ones that can be updated or changed, along with obviously all the fields down here, and the minor names can be also changed. Um, so I'm going to make this available to the Patreon members, and I'll put a link down in the video for you guys as well, if you guys want to get access to it. Uh, then we're also including what the wattage is for each miner, and that can be changed. The cost is basically calculated by the terahashes of each miner times the cost here, and that's you know automatic for you guys. Electrical cost is also calculated automatically. Return, in, uh, return on investment in months is also calculated, which we're doing down here in this big old spreadsheet. Uh, we're looking to see when basically each month we subtract what was possibly mined, and then we figure out how much the income could possibly be for it. Um, right now, I think we have it set to yeah zero and zero, so the price isn't changing on it. But if we change that just a slightly bit on the network hash rate, let's see the network hash rate. <coughs> excuse me, goes up three percent a month. You can see how that quickly impacts everything on these miners here. Even if Bitcoin price stays the same, we can see here that uh, just for the which one is this? This is the What's Miner M50. We're calculating about $8.65 in revenue currently with the current hash rate, Bitcoin price, and everything else. Then we're looking at revenue minus electricity. So this is basically net profit, $4.68. Then we're just multiplying it times 30 days in a calendar uh, day on average. And we're subtracting that from the original purchase price. So you can see the original purchase price was 2,950. We're subtracting the 140 from it to get to the 2,910 here, and then it's following all the way down until we get to 48 months, and we're still not paid off by the end of the 48 months because it doesn't become profitable or loses profitability back here right around, uh, what is this going to be, month 24, 25, somewhere around there. So if Bitcoin stays where it's at and hash rate increases, network hash rate increases, these miners are not going to be profitable anytime soon or you're not going to have basically a return on investment on them. The only way we can get a return on investment on these is obviously we know hash rates can be possibly increasing at least, I'm guessing 3% uh, a month. And that would get us a 38% 30, 30 increase over the year and that would represent uh, the network hash rate being at $350 million by the end of, well, this time next year basically. So I think that is uh, fairly doable. Also, Bitcoin price, I don't think Bitcoin price is going to be staying at this mark here. We probably should increase that as well to maybe 2.5% or 3% increase over that same period of time span, which would get us to 27000 by next year, which if you think about it, I think it's very doable. So just using very conservative numbers here, 
we can see that all the miners will become profitable within possibly the next two, three years based on this information that we have right now. So the What's Miner M50 would be basically ROI on that investment would be 23 months. The What's Miner M30 S++, which is a 110 terahash miner, that would be 25 months. And the What's Miner 108 terahash would be 26 months right now. So out of those three, obviously the What's Miner M50 is going to be the better one to get. You are going to get your return on investment a lot faster. Then when we look at the Ant Miners, the S19 XP, obviously that's really quick return on investment, 18 months. So that's actually pretty good. That's not too bad. Ant Miner S19 regular, the 110 terahash is 24 months. And the S19G Pro 104 terahash is also 24 months. So with the Ant Miners, you're looking at the S19 XPs as being the best of the bunch here right now. And then you got um, Canon Avalon, the A1366. That one is 20 months. The A1346 is 25 months. And the A1246 is 33 months. So that one looks like it is the worst out of the bunch here. Um, so the best would be obviously the N-Miner S19 XP and then followed by the Avalon A1366 at 20 months. And then after that, you get into 23 months, which would be the What's Miner M50 followed by, what do we got, 24. So the Antminer S19s would be at 24 months, roughly. So you can kind of see how this all plays out. It's obviously based on five cents per kilowatt hour on electrical cost. Now, if you have a little bit higher at 0 0.065, you can see that some of these miners do not become profitable within the 48 months that's calculated down, down below. Um, the S19 XP is 23 months, so that's still not too bad. Well, it's, it could be better, obviously. And 23 months, and the A1366 is 28 months. So they're still basically two years out. In two years out, I would hope that Bitcoin price goes above, uh, what do we have at 65,000 after f basically four years? I would think it would be above 100,000. So we could maybe run the numbers a little bit higher here, maybe 3%. What do we get? That, get, get that. that gets us to 82,000. If we do 3.5%, that gets us to 103,000. That's looking a little bit better now. And you're at 19 for the S19 XP, 21 months for the A1366. Now, if you're mining from home and you have, <coughs> excuse me, 0.9, 0 0.09 cents per kilowatt hour, you can see that even with these nice increases in Bitcoin price, even though the hash rate is increasing, that it's going to take you about 26 months to break even uh, mining from home, if you're lucky at $0.09. Cents. Uh, if you're at $0.10, cents, you're basically the only two that are going to be profitable for you are is the S19 XP and the A1366 uh, from Avalon, from Canon. And that's 30 months for the XP and 40 for the Av uh, Canon miner. The other ones would not um, generate a profit for you within 48 months. So that's obviously a tough, tough one to swallow. Um, but that's kind of the market that we're in right now with Bitcoin price being down, hash rates up pretty high. And then obviously we know hash rates going to be possibly increasing continually, continually here for at least the next foreseeable future. Um, we know that the miners are going to be buying more miners. Well, they already bought a lot of miners, but they're getting those installed. We also know that other miners are still looking to grow, like CleanSpark. They're going to be getting um, those miners installed next year, which is obviously going to further grow the ha network hash rate. And along with other miners, they're going to be doing the same thing. So it's one of those things where pretty much you really need to have great electrical cost, uh, if at all possible, fixed cost. If you can get in at even you know five cents, five and a half cents, which I think is fair, fairly doable, the miners should do pretty well. And then, you know, if you're thinking that Bitcoin's gonna go up to maybe 200,000 by within four years, uh, which some people are calling it could be 500,000. But let's just go see if it gets to four, um, 200,000, that'd be an increase of every month of roughly 5%. And then you can see obviously what the profit loss is here on the miners. The S19 would be up 14,000 in those four years per miner. So if you got 10,000 of those, 100,000 of those, that's going to be a really good return on investment on those. And the rest of the miners are going to be uh, profitable as well. 
But I thought I would just create this, kind of show you guys, and this is also the spreadsheet here, that uh, spreadsheet, the chart that shows the hash rate going up, and the hash rate I divided by 100,000 to make it, uh, you know, coincide here with Bitcoin a little bit, price rise, and Bitcoin price itself, if it goes up, you can see that. Now, if Bitcoin actually starts going down, continuing, uh, which would be really, really bad. I think a lot of miners would go bankrupt if that happened. But you can see how none of the miners would be profitable. Bitcoin price would end up at 12000 basically at the end of the four years. Network hash rate would be at about $1 billion terahashes per second. So this might be a little high, but we have been increasing about 35 to 50% on the network hash rate for the last couple of years. This uh, might be close to maybe we should all that down to maybe 2.4 or 2.5% something like that but even at that point they're not going to be profitable we need Bitcoin to go up at least 3% uh, if not more to make it worthwhile for everybody so that is it I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did hit the like button subscribe helps me out tremendously and then let me know what you guys thought of the numbers here and if you're interested in them they'll be available to my Patreon members I'll put a link down in the description below for this weekend, there's not much going to be going on. We'll take a look at the miners, see how they did against Bitcoin this week, and then we'll see if there's any other news coming up. Obviously, the end of the month is Monday, so we'll start getting new um, miner production updates for October, which is going to be exciting to see how everybody's doing. Um, and then we'll get into, obviously, the reporting season for the miners, uh, their Q3 reports. That's going to be coming up in about a week to two weeks for some of the miners, so that'll be interesting as well. So we got a lot going on here. Um, other than that, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.